Hello everyone and welcome back to Military Aviation History. I'm standing in front of a MiG-21. This is a Soviet uh, jet fighter from the Cold War era. However, this one has finished markings because in the 1960s, early 1960s, uh, these aircraft were sold to Finland. Now the question I often get with this aircraft is what is that enormous lance kind uh, looking device up front? Uh, this is a pitot and it essentially allows the pilot to read the aircraft's speed. So the pitot tube might need a bit more explanation. And yes, it is pronounced pitot after French engineer Henri Pitot who invented the tube in the 18th century and not pitot like they call it for some reason. Now there are different models of pitot tubes for different uses, but the basic function is always the same. Imagine a tube with a hole pointing in the flow direction of a fluid, this being air in our case. On the other side of the tube, a chamber is blocked off by a pressure transducer. This chamber holds the total pressure. Then, imagine a second hole perpendicular to the fluid flow with a respective chamber separated from the first chamber via the aforementioned pressure transducer. The pressure transducer measures the pressure differential between the two. Taking that measurement and taking into account some additional figures such as air density, the velocity can be measured with Bernoulli's equation and some fancy number crunching. Now because you want undisturbed airflow to do this, the pitot has to be beyond the pressure field that is built up when you're going subsonic. When going supersonic, correctional values are taken into account to provide accuracy as the total pressure changes. Pitots are not without measurement errors, but with time we got better at them. But the question is, why is it so far out and why do you see this in quite a few jets that have these pitots that are just enormous? This is because at the speed that these guys are going, you really need to have uh, the, the pitot as far away from uh, the actual aircraft fuselage. What happens if, you, if you're going subsonic yeah, is you build up a pressure field that is around and especially in front of your aircraft. And this pressure field causes all kinds of problems to accurate speed reading, especially at high angles of attack and with aircraft that have a high wing loading. And yes, the MiG-21 has a high wing loading. Um, with the pitot having to go into, a fl into the flow direction, you can see how, how um, that is a problem, especially the closer it is to the uh, aircraft, the higher the angle of attack, the more bleak the angle it will be. So with a long pitot, you can get around this because it, re it reaches relatively far outside this kind of pressure field that's be that is being built up. And this allows the pilot to get a more accurate speed reading and also um, that the aircraft has to get less compensation factors, in has to take less compensation factors into account. So there you go. That's why you sometimes see this kind of lance looking device on uh, fighter jets. And I hope you guys learned something um, here. This aircraft, you can visit it at the Finnish Aviation Museum. Uh, thanks very much for them for letting me film this and a couple of other episodes. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider supporting it so I can make more of this, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, you find all the links in the description below to my Patreon for that. Um, anyway, I will leave you with a nice little look of a Finnish MiG-21. It's quite a late war. Oh, one, one more thing I want to tell you guys. When the MiG-21 started out, the lance was below the engine coming out on the bottom and then they moved it up top in, one, in the later models. Anyway, it's just a little bit of trivia for you. So yeah, as always guys, have a great day, good hunting and see you in the sky.